What's up guys, Chris here and welcome to June in War of the Visions. We're almost through the rough patch for free to play and by that of course I mean the anniversary event followed up by the double entendre from Gumi of two premium units and middle fingers to the free to play community. But the clouds are parting soon and it comes in the form of unit selection quests which will be how we get a number of URs throughout the summer. We'll talk about these in a little bit, but first we'll use a little bit of history to figure out exactly what we can expect leading up to Final Fantasy VII in August. Now, remember guys, the Halloween units dropped right before Final Fantasy IV, the winter units dropped right before Final Fantasy X, and you can bet your Chocobo's bushy bet feathers that the summer units are going to drop right before Final Fantasy VII, I'm calling it right now. So we might even get new swimsuit units like we got with the winter units. Uh, let me know in the comments section below which swimsuit units you guys would like to see. My votes would go to Engelbert and Miranda. So as we talk about the upcoming months, I'll lead into that by saying I think the next two months are a great time for free to play to set aside Vizor and uh, relax, save up for Final Fantasy 7 or maybe some bikini beauties as the sun comes out. If you guys like the video, lotion up that thumbs up and subscribe buttons below and let's talk summer fun. I want to open up this video by briefly talking about unit selection quests. These are the URs that will be given out to you for free, provided that you can beat a series of missions using non-UR units of a single element. The upcoming units that fall into this category you can see here, that's Camillo, Moraga, Ramur, uh, Gargas, and Vern, who just came out in JP. So there's two takeaways that I wanna bring up here. The first being that you'll need to prepare a strong MR R or SR units for each element in order to unlock these characters and get all of their shards and mind spheres. These selection quests can be extremely difficult and because you can't use UR units, a lot of free to play won't be able to compete with them right away, which is totally fine. But you should definitely pick out an element or two now and start building up strong MRs and SRs for those elements so that you're ready when these quests come around. The second piece is that when when we talk about building these units in this video and for future weekly planning guides and monthly planning guides, uh, it's more about should you actually build the unit up and spend limited rainbow spheres, fragments, and blossoms on these units since as free to play we will be limited by these materials. To see how these selection quests actually work, you can head over to Sensei Cabbage's channel and watch him play through selection quests, which I will link in the description below. Okay, let's jump into it. And first up, we have Hunger Games Helena. And I mean, what is there to say? She's hot, she's lost the bonnet, but she's still a premium unit, which means she's a no-go for free to play. Now, if you do a step or two on the step up or you happen to pull her on like a free pull or something, you absolutely should grab up as many shards as possible while she's featured. She is an incredible unit who will have nearly as much of an impact on PvP as Yuna has had, but I cannot recommend chasing Helena for those who don't want to spend money because the cost greatly outweighs the benefit. We do have a very interesting vision card launching in Global this week called Maidens of the Rose, which will add luck and dexterity for dark units as well as slash resistance piercing and attack and light resistance and agility for the Nera and Shadow Links. Um, this card reminds me a lot of 2B's card, specifically for Venera or Shadow Links. In terms of top end use, this card will enable Venera to be an evasion monster, even more so than she already is, uh, similar to how 2B performs right now. And you shouldn't sleep on the value of this card for 3PO Stern and Baby Stern as well. If Venera is a favorite unit of yours, this card is a must have, probably a pass and a slow build for everybody else. The Carbuncle Vision Card in Esper. As we've covered before, this is an incredible card to have for light magic teams. All of you that have the Yuna Sakura combo definitely should pick up this card. It allows your light teams to attack a greater variety of enemy teams with Missile Resistance and Spirit. It also is kind of like an anti Garvel and anti Helena card. So if you run the Yuma, Yuna Bahamakura, uh, you almost have to get this card if you want to go face first into Helena teams and have a chance. Um, my personal opinion would be if 
if you don't have Yuna, um, I'd probably just pass on this card. The OG will make a return in June, and it will be June 16th in two weeks. And of course, I'm talking about Warrior of Light. The bottom line for free to play or light spenders is if you already have King Mont, Titus, or another physical tank or bruiser, the Vizure investment here won't get you that much more than what you already have. It's kind of like buying a 57 inch TV when you already have a 55 inch TV. The Warmech Vision card and Esper are much more intriguing. The party effect of area resistance is really, really unique. And as I mentioned in last month's guide, this is not only a fire card, but it's much more like Odin, where if you get this thing to 99, you'll find yourself using it in a variety of teams and situations. The Esper is even better with defense, critical evasion, slash attack. Um, it's pretty much a great Esper for almost any tank in the game. And again, I'll throw this out there. Eris Kit lowers hate and increases area of effect resistance, which means in combination with the Warmech card, she will be very difficult to kill. Just throwing that one out there. Okay, so the light UR unit for the selection quest and young Benicio del Toro, Camillo, if you have any kind of strong light units, you should definitely get him to 99 uh, for his TMR, which adds light attack and accuracy to allies. As for the unit himself, he's not that game breaking as he's missing a couple of critical skills from his sniper and pugilist sub jobs, but the variety of damage types he can do um, makes him kind of useful for things like tower or brutal quests. He's much more valuable to new players than experienced players who have deeper rosters. I don't really see him being any better than a lot of the existing light units in terms of mono element light teams, and he won't do anything that other units on your roster uh, can't already do for mixed element teams. And so that's why I say for experienced players, he's probably not all that worth it. Next up, we get the Freezy, Dragon, Esper, and Vision card, and I mean, Ice Magic, uh, Rosa, Medina, Freyevia. If you run any of these three behind Orin and Gilgamesh, you can easily have a really scary team, adding that ice attack from the party effect. Uh, the Esper really isn't anything special in my mind. Uh, it's pretty specific to ice units, more specifically ice magic units with added spirit. Uh, it's not bad, but it's also not something I would be rushing out to get. Cowl was a free unit in JP, and he's actually a pretty solid unit. He's a high range, high accuracy sniper unit that pretty much outclasses a 99 Niv Lu or Winter Victora at his release. Now, if you don't have tools for range units or wind units, he's not really going to do much for you. But if you have Lucia's card or Frederica's card maxed, uh, Tetrasilphid, 2B, etc., things like that, um, Cowl can be pretty effective. Also note that with his high accuracy and auto hit abilities, barrier breaking, buff dispels, he'll be a good tool against units like Tubi and Venera. I really do think that he's a must 120 for those who have some of those vision cards that I talked about earlier. Uh, for everybody else, yeah, you can probably pass. Now for more, and guys, this is the one speed bump this summer in my mind for free to play. Uh, remember when Lucia came out, how dominant she was in Glacella, Sakura, I, I think more will have that kind of impact as a non-limited unit. Uh, even if you can't find room for her in PvP, the ability at which she can prevent magic damage will make her infinitely useful for things like 3-star Esper quests, brutal quests, bosses, towers, and more. Uh, her kit includes innate magic resistance and spirit, two spirit buff passives, magic guard, magic barriers, self shell, regen, I think you guys get the point by now. Uh, she's one of those units that you're never going to regret building up and an absolute must to pair with Titus, Winter Victora, Aerith, Ildira, or Glacella. To follow up on that, the Stellar Guidance Vision card is an obvious choice to pair with more. More spirit, more magic, more critical damage, uh, just more more. I would call this card a must for more and Aerith and strongly consider for Ildira and Miranda. Um, a global upgrade to this card, by the way, for more and Ramada would be a scary addition, which is a really uh, very real possibility. Moraga is the Earth Selection Quest UR, huge damage, close range, weak to magic. Uh, it's not like he will dominate the meta or anything, but he can definitely stand toe to toe with some of the units we'll talk about here in a minute, including Charlotte, uh, Cloud, and then potentially EX or Landu. 
They'll be awesome for mono earth, but because earth is such a weird element to begin with, I don't know. I I'm sure he'll pair well with some earth units in the future, but that also means that you can pass on building him right away and use those EX materials on other units and just build him in the future if you end up getting units that he works well with. So that makes him a pass in my mind. And now we get back into visual crunch time and it starts with Charlotte who comes in from Brave Exvius and guys, she's an amazing, amazing unit. Whether you're running mono lightning or not, she's a great tank that can single handedly handle water teams, lots of defense and spirit buffs, defense and spirit breaking resistance, self healing, buffing, attack resistances. Let's put it this way, just like Rain, Sakura and Laswell before her coming from Brave Exvius, you're never going to regret investing in Charlotte if you decide to do so. Summer Lilith. Now here's an earth unit that will be kind of crazy with an EX upgrade. She's similar in a way to Winter Victoria in that she's got the Paladin sub job, decent HP and survivability, and good range. I would say if you've invested in those earth cards, um, in the earth vision cards, she will be a great addition to your count. In general though, free to play will be staying away since she's limited and the earth element is kind of weird. It's kind of the same story with Summer Catone. Outside of strict fire accounts, and I'm talking to you, Miss Idia, she's kind of like a mix between Kilfe and Howlet, but the fire element. I do think she provides a much more specific role than Summer Lilith does, as there aren't any strong fire magic attackers. She will be the only one in the game for a long time, so for those with King Mont, Raldor, Winter Mashery, etc., she will enable your fire teams to be much more versatile in PvP situations. Next up we have Verlick, and this one's simple. He's like the non-limited version of Oron. The ice element is very limited for free to play because all the best units are either premium or limited outside of basically Laswell. So Verlick will make ice more accessible for free to play. Personally, I don't think he adds enough for anyone to want to chase him, even those that have ice focused accounts. In my mind, he's a hard pass on all accounts. Ramira is the dark UR unit for unit selection. Uh, she should be one of the easier selection quests to complete since free to play players will probably all have 99 Shadow Links and Gathgarian at a minimum. I do think she has a nice kit with Time Mage, Scholar, and White Mage. Probably one of the top selection UR units, if not the best one. Uh, but Dark teams will actually have a hard time slotting her in since she's not going to be stronger than Dwayne or Darth Helena or any other options. I think she's a strong candidate to 120 for a lot of players though, simply because of her AoE haste at 120 and her ability to use Quicken and Raze. Now we go forth into Final Fantasy VII. Tifa, I mean, <laughs> come on guys, she's given out for free in JP. If she's given out for free in Global, just like 9S, everyone should be getting her to 99. Accounts with Strike Attack or Strong Wind cards will want to 120 her. Uh, her and 2B will be the Selma and Louise of PvP when she comes out. If you're planning on 120 Tifa, then you definitely want to set aside the Vizor for her vision card as well. You can run the Pugilist sub job on 2B if you get this card to take advantage of that strike attack on the party ability. Tifa with her card and 2B with her card will be a tough combo to beat, no matter who the third person in the squad is. Cloud, Barret, and Aerith can all be had for a maximum of 40,000 Vizor thanks to the pity system implemented by Gumi. Cloud is a very strong lightning attacker. Because of how accessible the lightning element has been for free to play in general, I think he's the best option for free to play from the Final Fantasy VII event. A 120 Cloud and 9S together with any third unit would be a pretty solid team. Um, in the future, I'm sure a 120 Orlando and Cloud will pair well as the Thunder Bros as well. And just like Tifa, if you're aiming for Cloud, you should plan on the Scorpion Vision card as well. In fact, any strong lightning account should really try for this card not just for those who get Cloud. Uh, the card bonuses are fairly generic, and by that I mean not specific to an attack type. You have AoE resistance, critical rate and damage, attack and slash resistance. These are all great buffs. This is a must for Cloud or strong lightning accounts. 
There are so many strong ice units. I think Barret is kind of just like Oron from Final Fantasy X. He's completely a luxury in War of the Visions. His kit is great. He's tanky, has some nice strike and missile attacks and disabling abilities. He will shine with any of the other ice units. And I think you can target him if you have a strong ice account and you can pass if not. Now for Aerith, and after diving into her kit a little bit more, I really do think that she rivals Yuna in a lot of ways and may actually be underrated. She's top tier in every single way. She's going to be just as annoying as Yuna is with lots of full heals, re-raise, uh, surprising survivability, and her judgment ray deals strong damage, reduces AP, and inflicts immobilize. I really don't think she's only for water accounts. If you have Yuna, you won't get much more out of Aerith that you don't already get out of Yuna. If you're one of these stand-up citizens that didn't get Yuna, um, save some gill and just buy a flower already. Lastly, Gargus, he's the wind UR selection unit, and I mean, eh, the only thing that makes him unique is that he's a wind magic unit, and we already have Howlet, we have Halloween Leela, um, I have almost every wind unit at 120 or 99 on my account, and I'm probably not going to build him, so that should just tell you everything you need to know. Finally, let's take a look at the EX schedule. We already know that Gumi could mess with this given what they did with Rain and Venera and Shadowlings, which you can see there on June 2nd this week. So take this entire schedule with a grain of salt. Be on the lookout for Dwayne Laswell and the Winter units. Those are the ones that stand out to me on here. Venera specifically could be a much better EX than we think with her specific Vision card launching this week in Global. The rest of these units, uh, I mean, Engelbert and Ruin Stern in my mind were kind of disappointing EX upgrades and Katone as well. Anyway, that's it for this month. Looking forward to a great summer in War of the Visions. Be on the lookout towards the end of this month for my summer summon something <laughs> extravaganza. When Helena gets added to the unit pool, I'll be doing a video where I have something like 300 or so summon tickets to you. So we'll be going after Helena and King Mont. Uh, let me know in the comments section what you are saving for. Are you guys going for Final Fantasy VII? Are you going for something else? Um, my personal path involves Tifa and then I'll have a hard choice to make between Aerith and Cloud. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you next time.